Okay, so as I said, this loss factor is very important for maneuverability of an aircraft. Uh, <coughs> so let's continue with these equations. So this is the equation we derived earlier for the lateral acceleration during a turning maneuver. And this lateral acceleration from physics is equal to V squared divided by R. So from here we can obtain this expression for the radius of turn. Okay, so during a sustained level turn maneuver, the radius of turn is related to uh, these parameters here. <coughs> um, so by just looking at this equation, you can conclude that if you want uh, a tighter turn, or if you want the tightest possible turn, that means the radius of turn should be as small as possible, then you need to fly with the lowest possible speed. That's, that's because if you want small r, v should be small, and you want this n to be as high as possible. So you want the highest possible load factor, okay? And uh, <coughs> so obviously, higher uh, small r means that you have a, a highly maneuverable aircraft. So this becomes especially important for fighter airplanes. Uh, another variable that is <coughs> that can be used to assess the turning performance is the turn rate. This is the angular rate of turn. And this uh, psi is the angle you see here. So the time rate of change of this angle. Uh, and if you call that omega, that's uh, equal to V divided by R. So from here, uh, instead of V, you can write omega times R. And uh, from the, the earlier previous relation, you can go to this relation. So previously we had an expression for R. And if you put that into this equation, then you will obtain this equation for the turn rate, omega. Okay? And if you look at, compare these equations, they are very similar, and the conditions for large omega are exactly the same as the conditions for small r. So for faster turning performance, you want omega to be a large number. And for that, you need the same things. You need to fly slowly, and you need to fly with a very large turn, with a very large load factor. Okay? Uh, so let me show you a video showing why, uh, what happens if you cannot sustain this turn. So suppose that you want to make a level turn maneuver. Uh, <coughs> then you need to increase the lift force accordingly, right? So if you are turning with a small angle, if you are making a very slow turn, and if your angle, bank angle is this much, then you only need a slightly increased uh, lift force, right? So you, your lift force needs to be just a little bit higher than the regular lift force during the cruising flight. But if you want to turn a very fast, uh, at a very fast rate, like this one here, then you need to have a very, very large <coughs> uh, lift force such that its vertical component can balance the weight of the aircraft. And if you cannot, then obviously you cannot sustain that maneuver, right? So if you have such a high bank angle, but if your uh, lift force is not increased enough, then the vertical component will be much smaller compared to the weight, and obviously your aircraft will lose altitude. So that's what happens in this video. In this video you see a radio controlled airplane. So this is a very realistic looking aircraft by the way. It has real jet engines. But in fact it's a radio controlled airplane. <coughs> So here the, <coughs> the pipe will attempt a level turn, 
but he cannot adjust the bank angle carefully or appropriately. And eventually the A cup crashes. So if you <coughs> pay attention to what happened there, so the the path increased the bank angle too much, and at that point the lift force is not big enough to balance the weight, and as a result it starts losing altitude and it quickly goes out of control. So in fact, as I said, this is a very difficult maneuver <coughs> because you need to adjust everything very carefully. All four controls are involved there. Um. Okay, so another important co point while making a, a, such a level term maneuver is that if you are especially doing a very a steep turn, if you are doing a turn uh, very fast, then you need to have, as we see in these equations, you need to have a very large load factor, right? So if you want the radius to be really small, then you need to choose M to be as large as possible. And that will have a huge impact on the pilot, or if there are any other people in the airplane, then... Um, As I showed here, then during that maneuver, the people will be experiencing a much greater gravitational force. Right? So normally, while, while we're sitting here, we all feel the gravitational force, just the G. But if you are in an airplane performing a, like, let's say, 6G maneuver, then you, we would be feeling a 6G force. And that is really very difficult to handle. Uh, because if you are uh, okay, so if you are in, inside such an, such an airplane and then you experience a very large force in that direction, that will have effect your entire body, right? And for example, it will affect the blood within our veins and that will pull all the blood towards our feet. And that will leave our brains bloodless, and it will, uh, and that causes unconsciousness. If, if the blood doesn't go to brain, the brain stops working for a small amount of time during while well, during the time when there's no blood feed, and uh, we can people can lose cons consciousness during uh, such a maneuver. So let's take a look at this video. It's a pretty funny video. Let me. Uh, see what that is. Okay, so fighter pilots are trained to withstand those forces. Okay, so they go through special training and they learn how to stop blood flowing out of their brains by uh, squeezing their muscles. And they wear special uh, clothes to help with that. Uh, but if you are not a trained person, and if you need to expand, if you expand such high uh, accelerations, then so here's what happens to. So in this uh, video, you see an, uh, a person flying in an F-18 aircraft. Uh, so the, there's a pilot in the front, and he's flying in the back seat, and there's a video showing what happens to the person. In fact, there's sound in the studio. Let me turn that on.
So by the way, the first one was a pull-up maneuver. I, I didn't talk about that yet, but the same concept is applicable there. So this is going to be a, a level turn maneuver, this is the second one. Uh, so as I said, normally fighter pilots are trained for that, and uh, they are trained in um, in centrifuge machines. Let me show that as well. Um, so the important thing is that you need your brain to be uh, fed by uh, fed by blood, right? Otherwise, you lose consciousness. That's what happens to this uh, passenger here. Um, and to be able to do that, you need to squeeze your muscles as hard as you can. Uh, so let's take a look at this uh, training video. Okay, so this is the machine. So there's basically a, uh, this part here, and there's a person sitting in there. So the person is getting the training. So the G forces are created in a laboratory in this uh, setup. So as it turns out, it just simulates a level turn maneuver. And the orientation of this part is adjusted to give the bank angle. So the, the person sitting in there is, uh, can so you can basically set the load factor arbitrarily in this setup by changing the rotation speed and the bank angle. The, any lo load can be applied on this person. And if you are wondering what happens inside, I have a video for that too, but let's see if it is here. No, this is not that. So. Oh, it's this one. So this is the inside of that centrifuge machine. And you see the lot limit here. So this is training within a centrifuge machine, but obviously while making a turn in, the, in an airplane, they have to withstand the same amount of forces. So here there's a, an F-16 aircraft making a 9G turn. Uh, <coughs> 
So the pilot within that airplane should be doing the same thing the, the other guy was doing in that video. See? So he has to be very carefully uh, controlling his body to stay awake. And obviously if the pilot loses consciousness then it will be very bad, right? So he can easily lose control of the airplane and crash the aircraft. Okay, so so we talk about the turn, the sustained level turn maneuver, and the equation for the radius of turn is this equation, and for the the rate of turn, um, we have a very similar equation, and. Uh, Okay, so in order to design a highly maneuverable aircraft, all you need to do is to make sure that your aircraft can have high load factors. So this is the load factor is the 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 most important thing. Now the question becomes how is the load factor related to the design of the aircraft? In other words, how should you design the aircraft such that it can handle high load factors? Uh, so let's say so by the way, the limiting factor today is the the pilot. So technically you can make like 20G aircraft, but the pilot then wouldn't be able to survive such a maneuver. So right now 9G is accepted as the highest limit a human pilot can withstand. Uh, so that's why the, the, most, the, the best aircraft, the fighter aircraft can only do 9G maneuvers because the, the pilot is the limiting factor there. But for unmanned aircraft, then that's not a limiting factor. So that's why people think that in the future, even combat aircraft will be unmanned. That's because they will have superior maneuvering capabilities. So you can turn an unmanned airplane at 30 Gs, 40 Gs. And since there's no uh, pilot on board, uh, if your aircraft is strong enough, then you can make such fast maneuvers uh, with an unmanned aircraft. Uh, <coughs> Okay, so let me uh, I can uh, let me just insert a new page here. So let's consider that we want to uh, design an aircraft with a high load factor capability. So during a regular flight, so if this is your fuselage, you have the vertical stabilizer, you have wings. So your uh, wings need to create a force that is uh, big enough to carry the weight, right? So if so, the what I show here is the lift force on the wing. Uh, so during cruising flight, lift should be equal to the weight of the aircraft. But if you are making a sustained level turn maneuver with a load factor m, then during During a level turn maneuver with a load factor n, and lift force should be equal to n times the weight, and that comes from the definition of load factor. So let me just quickly remind you how we defined the load factor. <coughs> So remember, this is how we define the load factor. So if your load factor is 5, for example, then lift force should be equal to 5 times the weight. Uh, so that means during uh, that maneuver, your lift force should be like that, right? Or if it's a 90 maneuver, it will need to be nine times the regular uh, lift or the weight of the aircraft. And as you can imagine, that's a very difficult thing, right? <clears throat> because you design your aircraft to carry the weight of your aircraft, um, design the wings to carry the weight. But if you want the aircraft to be a very highly maneuverable aircraft, then your wings now have to be designed much stronger. 
because they will have to create loads that are nine times the weight of the aircraft. So that imposes a lot of uh, <coughs> constraints on the aircraft design. For one thing, your aerodynamically, the wings should be able to create that high uh, lift forces. Okay? So the aerodynamic design should be able to create that much lift force. Also, the structurally, the uh, <coughs> um, so before I go to structures, let me just uh, explain you this part. Um, I suppose that you want this to be n times the weight, right? And if your speed is known, you're flying at a certain speed. Uh, to be able to create such a high lift force, you should be able to have a high lift coefficient. Okay, so the so this is where aerodynamics uh, come into play. So you have uh, CL alpha curve like this, then you should be able to have sufficient large lift coefficients to give you that uh, much lift force. And having a very large lift coefficient will require uh, a very big engine because the the drag coefficient is related to the lift coefficient through the drag polar relation and if you have very large lift forces then uh, there will be very large drag forces as well so for a very highly maneuver aircraft you need to have good aerodynamics you need to have sufficient large lift coefficients but that means there will be very large drag coefficients as well that means you will need to have sufficiently uh, strong engines to, with, to sustain those maneuvers and also structurally your wings have to be uh, strong enough to carry all those loads so everything is uh, affected if you think about all of these um, so the aerodynamics is uh, important because you need high lift force engine is important because there will be a huge drag force your engine should be very powerful and <coughs> Finally, the, the wings have to be strong enough to carry all those loads. So all these things, um, in fact, everything of related to the design is <coughs> important. Um, Okay, uh, So let me show you a couple of videos. Uh, so this video is again taken with a remotely controlled aircraft and there is a camera on the air aircraft and the aircraft does all sorts of fast turning turning maneuvers and as we just saw during those maneuvers the lift force gets much larger than the the lift force the regular weight of the aircraft and you see that the wings of the airplane uh, is stretched due to these additional loads So you can see the, the wings bending, right? So the, due to the additional loads. So if the weight of the aircraft is one kilogram, then the, the, the lift force can get much larger compared to that. And as you see at the end of the video, the, it, the wing finally breaks because the pilot forces the aircraft too much. And the wing just cannot withstand that lift force anymore. He tries to 
uh, pushes the load factor higher than the what the aircraft was designed for, and that certainly breaks the wing. Um. Okay, so when designing an airplane, uh, you decide how maneuverable you want your aircraft to be. And since, as I just explained, that affects everything. And uh, for a fighter aircraft, you aim for large load factors. But for other airplanes, uh, it doesn't have to be that large. So typically for uh, passenger airplanes, as far as I know, the load factor limits are on the order of two something, like 2.5 or something like that, uh, because they don't, they're not expected to make such uh, sharp turns. Uh, okay, so I have some videos to show, and then I need to talk about this BN diagram. I just cannot decide which one I should go first. So probably I should explain this diagram first, and then uh, I will show you the videos. Okay, so now, since the load factor is the, the important thing in turning maneuver, Let's see how much load factors an aircraft can uh, create. Um, so what is the, the load factor our aircraft can uh, have, right? So that's the question. There are different limiting factors. So let's consider the aerodynamics first. Okay, so uh, the lift force is, let me write our lift force equation. Uh, so, if you are looking for the maximum load factor, then you should be using the maximum lift coefficient, right? So, if you want the right-hand side to be as large as possible, then we need to make the left-hand side as large as possible. And that will require the lift for the coefficient, the maximum possible lift coefficient to be used. So, for, for maximum load factor, That means the maximum lift force is going to be 1 over 2 times rho times v squared times s times cl max. And from here, the maximum load factor is obtained as 1 over 2 rho v squared s cl max divided by the weight of the aircraft, okay? Uh, so the maximum lo uh, load factor you can have depends on the flight speed. In fact, so the maximum lift coefficient is a constant number. It is the lift coefficient at the stall condition. Uh, so this is a constant number. We're talking about the sustained level turn maneuver. So this is constant during that maneuver, obviously. So weight doesn't change during the, we're talking about small duration, so the weight doesn't change significantly. Uh, so since everything here is the same, uh, if you consider the relation, if you consider how much this changes with the airspeed, you will obtain this curve here. So right, this is what you get. So at, if your flight speed is zero, then the maximum load factor is zero. But as the speed increases, the load factor increases uh, through this parabolic relation, right? So this diagram shows the maximum, so let me put max here, load factor you can get as a function of flight speed. Okay?
Um, Okay, so this is the, the load factor limited by aerodynamics. So at any speed, you can have aerodynamically a load factor somewhere less than this. Okay, so this is the maximum you can <coughs> ever have if you use the maximum lift coefficient. But if you use the lift coefficient that is less than the maximum, then you will be somewhere below this curve. Right, so this is the allowable load factor area. Uh, <coughs> And if you're flying with CL max, drag force will be um, 1 or 2 times rho v square s times CD, but CD is going to be CD0 plus k times CL max squared, right? Uh, so you will have such a uh, drag force and this should be uh, uh, the balance by the thrust force of your aircraft so this should be equal to TA max so as you see if you increase the speed the flight speed of your aircraft then as the V term gets larger than uh, the required thrust force will be increased as well and at some point it will be greater than the whatever thrust force your engine can give you okay so at that point the limiting factor will become the engine thrust force okay so suppose the, the relation is quadratic here so you can increase the speed as large as possible but at some point the required thrust force will be too large uh, compared to the maximum thrust force you can get out of your engines, then in that case, the engine thrust will become the limiting factor. So this example is very nice. I'm going to show you this example on Friday. Yeah, I think that uh, summarizes everything related to this. Um, Okay, so this is the equation related to uh, the engine thrust limit. Okay, so this blue curve is the, the maximum load factor you can get with the maximum lift coefficient. So this is the aerodynamic limit on the load factor. And as I said, at some point the engine thrust is not sufficient. And at that point the limiting uh, factor becomes the engine thrust. And you can solve for that uh, using these equations here. Uh, uh, so this is drag equation. On the left hand side, this is the aerodynamic drag. And this is the maximum thrust you can get out of your engines. So this puts a limit on lift coefficient. Okay, so if the required thrust force is larger than the available thrust, then that means uh, at that speed, you cannot fly at maximum CL anymore. So you need to make adjust CL according to the limit on the right hand side here. Um, okay, so that puts uh, a limit on the lift coefficient. And um, once you are above that level, the maximum load factor will be limited by the engine thrust. And that brings this red curve here. Um, okay, so hopefully on the example I'm going to show on Friday will help you understand these things better. So I can see that it may not be too clear at this moment, but once I talk about that, that uh, example, you will 
clearly see uh, these limits. Okay, um, so we have something like 10 minutes left, and in that 10 minutes time, let me show you these videos I I have here. Um, So this is a very nice video. In this video they are showing uh, how they test the wings of, I think this was Boeing 777 aircraft. So let me explain what they are showing here and then let's watch the video after that. Um, so as I said earlier, the design of the wing has to be uh, taking the maximum load factor into account. So if you So you know the maximum weight of the air aircraft, right? And let you say that under the maximum weight, my aircraft should be able to handle 2G maneuvers. That means the, the maximum lift force the, uh, the wings can carry should be two times the maximum weight of the aircraft. And you have to design the wing according to that number. Uh, that means the wing shouldn't break under those loads. It should be strong enough to carry that much force. But making the wing stronger than necessary is a bad thing as well. So if you if you are designing a 2G aircraft and if you make the wings strong enough to carry five times the weight, then that means your wings are stronger than necessary, and that means your wings are uh, heavier, right? Because stronger means you need to use more materials, and that will result in a heavier wing. Uh, so you have you are limited from both ends. It needs to be strong enough, but not too strong. And in this video, they are showing how they test that. So they designed the wing, and now they are testing if it's within that range. Uh, first, they want to see if it is strong enough, so such that it doesn't break under such a load. And then they see if it uh, breaks if the load gets uh, har uh, higher than that. And there's also a 50% margin of safety. So let's say their target goal is, uh, I don't know, one million newtons. Let's, I'm just making it up. So the wing should be able to carry one million newtons of load and they put a 50% margin of safety. That means it should be, it shouldn't break until the force gets 1.5 million newtons. But after that it should break. That's what they want to see in the video. In fact, the video is not very clear. The quality is not that good. So let me, it's quite hard to see here. What you see here is a wing. Okay, so this part is a wing and it is under loading. So in the laboratory, they are applying forces on the wing to, see, to simulate lift force. And as you see, it is already quite a bent, right? So normally it should be some close to horizontal. But under the load, it is flexible and it's bended up like that. And the number you see here is the the percentage of the, the maximum load it should carry. So right now it is 27% higher than the maximum. And the wing shouldn't break until this number reaches 50. And then it should break soon after that. Okay?
Now the load reaches 50% larger than the maximum level and it didn't break, so they are all happy that it didn't break. Now they're waiting to see if the wing was too strong or not. So it's at 152. And if it doesn't break until 200, then it will be a bad thing because that will mean that the wing was too strong. And now they're anxious to see when it will break. So anyway, the wing went to break at 154, so it was a very good design in fact. So it didn't break until that 50% margin of safety and after that it broke at 154. So that proves it was a very successful wing design. And there's a similar video for Airbus A380, but this is in German. And I don't know German, so let, so let me just mute the sound. So this has a uh, high resolution, so it's better to see. So they apply forces through these pistons here. Uh, in the air, obviously, the force, is, force comes from pressure, air pressure, but in the lab, they are using these pistons to create the forces. And they're careful inspecting that there should be no cracks or no uh, damage to the wing if the loads are within the uh, acceptable limits. Okay, um, so let's end with this video. In this video, you see the uh, a Boeing 747 aircraft during flight. A, a, a passenger recorded this video. And this is not during a maneuver, by the way, so this is just doing a cruising flight, but apparently the air is, the there's some turbulence in the air, and that causes the, the lift force to change, and you can see that the wing actually bends quite significantly while flying. So this is just to show you that the aircraft wings are really flexible. So it looks like this was a very uncomfortable flight. Well, actually, there's one last thing I would like to mention. <coughs> so you know whirling dervishes, right? So let's take a look at this video. You know, these guys keep like whirling for very long time, like, I, I don't know, but they were for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, maybe even half an hour. And they apply this uh, bank turn principle 
so that they don't get dizzy. Because if you just turn around yourself really fast, and you know you must have done that as a kid, uh, so you get dizzy, right? And <clears throat> you can do that for a very long time. But the, uh, they apply a special technique. And that technique is the same principle as the, the bank of term maneuver. Look at the head of that person. His head is not straight, right? So his head has a certain bank angle. And the, that angle is to make sure that uh, he doesn't feel any lateral acceleration. So this is what I was showing here. Uh, so this is the bank angle of the head. And there's a little acceleration due to the turning. And he, he just uh, sets his head, uh, the angle of his head such that he doesn't feel any lateral acceleration so that his sensors, you know, we have sensors in our ears, right, to detect gravity. And those sensors are, get messed up if you turn around due to this lateral acceleration. You, that's how you feel that lateral acceleration. But if you adjust the angle of your head such that uh, the total acceleration is uh, <coughs> in the axis of your head, in this vertical axis of your head, then you don't feel that lateral acceleration. And that's how they can turn for long uh, times. Okay? So I, I just think it was in, it's interesting and related to this turning maneuver. So I, I wanted to mention that. Okay. Um, so today we... I talked about the sustained level turn maneuver. So there are three equations, and these equations are uh, shown here. The equations are simple, as always. There, there's nothing complicated. And on Friday, I'm on an example. I'm going to show how these equations are related to the design of an aircraft, and what, uh, how. So I will complete this diagram called the VN diagram. So this is a diagram where we have log factor on the vertical axis and the speed on the horizontal axis. So this limit comes from the aerodynamics and then there are, there's another boundary, another boundary coming from the engine and there's going to be a structural boundary and everything uh, forms this VN diagram and that this diagram is also known as the flight envelope. Okay. So let me stop here, and on uh, Friday I'm going to end the course with that example.